Hello there. I uh, thought I'd do something a little bit different today because I've been going back in my back and forth in my head about which pen to do next and what sort of thing. Should I do something different? This, that, the other, yada, 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 yada. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought I'd cough at you. Um, so I thought what I'd do is I'd just chat a little bit, to be honest, um, but centred around my top tray as it were. So I have a few pen trays these days. Um, I've got this one and I've got um, two more trays with a transparent display top and then one has one drawer underneath and one has two drawers underneath. So from all of that, and there's a case with loads of other stuff as well, but from all of that, today and this would change maybe daily, maybe weekly, maybe whenever the mood takes me, maybe in an hour, right? So right this instant, I'm going to say that this is probably my top tray, okay, of um, kind of my keepers, my the ones I enjoy writing with most um, for journaling, for letters, for whatever it might be for copying out Sherlock Holmes, you know. Um, so I thought I'd run through these briefly, not a currently inked as such, because uh, some of these aren't actually inked, but just a brief overview. Um, and as I'm doing that, you might get a bit of my pen journey, um, bit of history around maybe how I feel about this, bit of backstory of that. If that's not something that interests you, you can do one, yeah? Now's your chance. Um, so I may go a bit off kilter, off a tangent, whatever. There's no structure to this one, that's all I'm saying. I might rabbit on a little bit, kind of like I'm doing now. But if you want to listen to me rattle on, stay tuned. Right, everyone cleared out? Good. So... Um, yeah, a bit of a journey with some of these uh, that I've been in the I've been down the rabbit hole of fountain pens now for two, three, three years thereabouts, um, and I'm extremely lucky enough to be in a position where I have been able to acquire some very, very lovely pens. Um, Certain represent a couple of journeys, certain are just evolutions of taste, certain are just, well, saw that at a decent price, I'll try it out, and ended up loving it. Um, where should we start? This end or that end? What do you think? Let's start on this end here. As I say, no structure, no particular quality order, or, you know, whatever. I seem to have grouped Italian here, and kind of makers, independent makers here. And then an Otos and whatnot. Oh, it's Germany there, actually, thinking about it. Right, anyway, you know I said I'd waffle on on tangents. So here I have a Pilot Custom 743 Verdegris, Verdegris, whatever you like. Um, so this was a US exclusive uh, finish for the Pilot Custom 743, which to my understanding usually only comes in black or potentially like burgundy. Um, this is this the tail of this pen was um, well, late night eBay is dangerous, yeah. So every now and again, I will search around eBay for bits and bobs, bargains, semi bargains, stuff that I'm vaguely after, or just lusting after stuff that I'm never going to have. So uh, this particular evening, literally my last search was, oh, I'm just going to see if there's any pilot custom 743s knocking around in the UK at a reasonable price and etc. Because what puts me off kind of getting one of these, um, or has done generally, is um, like import duties, VAT. Like, you know, you go a Japan website or even a US website or even a European website, you get a price without the VAT. Um, and living in Britain, as I do... Um, and recent changes to import laws and international deals and stuff like that. Let's not go there, shall we? Um, 
what price you see on any particular website may not be the price you end up paying. So that uncertainty kind of does put me off from time to time. Anyway, uh, the one result on eBay that particular night for a custom 743 was this. And it was the Verdigris USA exclusive. And I, if I was getting one by choice, it would have been this. And it was at a reasonable price. And I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to have that, I'm afraid. <sighs> story of my pen life really um so it's got a fine nib i'll come back to that sticker in a minute um so pilot uh japanese fine generally speaking finer than a western fine more like an extra fine this is indeed like that um it's a beautiful beautifully smooth fine or extra fine um yeah. Absolutely fantastic. I suppose it's a, it would be on the end of too fine for me, generally speaking, if I was trying something out, I'd go, it's too fine for me. But I can adapt a little bit and write with it because it is such a nice fine. There's no scratch on it. Um, very little feedback. And through his feedback, it's nice feedback. It's not scratch. Um, very, very, very beautiful writer. I did have um, just the flow wettened up a little bit uh, by Mr. Thomas Ang at the recent London Pen Show which has helped my tastes a little bit. Wow, six minutes, one pen. This might be a two-part video, guys and girls. Right, um, sticker. Thoughts on the sticker? So, pilot pens come with a sticker with the nib grade. There it is. Fine, right? I see that some people keep these stickers on. I see that some people take these stickers off. What do you think? I don't know. I suppose it's well it's still on there purely because I was kind of getting used to the fine nib do I want to do this do I want to do that and if I wanted to resell it I can't really put the sticker back on I suppose I can but you know um it'll end up in a bin won't it so I kind of left it on there for now I don't know is it uh is it a pilot collector's thing oh I'm going to keep the sticker on I mean it's not like the nibs not marked. It is marked. It is marked fine. Um, so, I don't know. What are your thoughts on the sticker? Is it literally just a personal preference thing? Well, obviously it is, but, uh, you know, you've got the um, Con70 converter in there, which actually adds a nice bit of weight um, into the body, uh, which I really like. I like the balance and feel more than I thought I would. I think I reviewed a Custom 83 a while back and I wasn't blown away. Um, great pen, but I wasn't blown away. I um, think I prefer the 743 for whatever reason. Anyway, I'll review it fully at some stage. Next up, we have a Delta. Delta Dolce Vita Medio. Me or Media. This is media. I don't know. It was a medio anyway. Uh, it got tech and web on there. I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe um, it was a company thing or something. Maybe it's something to do with it. Or maybe it's a distribution thing. I don't know. So to my knowledge, this is the older uh, Delta. So before they closed the doors and they've obviously reopened, uh, been reincarnated now. So from my understanding, this is from before they shut down in the first place. Um, and it's numbered. It's 34,006. So that would suggest to me that it is indeed. Um, so you've got the classic orange kind of cracked ice resin. And you've got red cap and faux blind cap. This is not one where this comes off and you can operate the converter. Here's a cartridge converter. Um, so this is the, the medio or mid-size. Uh, this has a 14 karat gold uh medium nib yep um which i have had tuned quite a few threads to get that off but yeah delta branded converter very nice um so i did have that tuned uh it was just a little bit dry for me 
Uh, not so much dry, a little bit dry maybe, but uh, also just a couple of hard start issues. Actually, this was another eBay jobby. Uh, actually got off this off someone who um, had it in their collection for a number of years, um, but never used it. So, well, said they never used it. I have no reason to disbelieve them. It was pretty clean when I got it. Um, they uh so it's pretty much new old stock i suppose so yeah there's a couple of hard starty issues and and things like that um so i got that tuned by uh annabelle hiller at the recent london pen show and it is now lovely lovely and smooth and really good flow nice and wet um so yeah this was another ebay late night jobby this this was because of uh this um which is a modern uh half post revival shall we say delta a bit dusty there a bit dusty mate um which i got a decent price uh so this is steel nibbed uh with a steelograph corsani nib on and this is actually an architect grind by mark Backass, um which came with this this was pre-owned um so this is a bit cheaper than that obviously gold nibbed and whatnot um and i was never really bowled over to the point of desperately wanting delta um but i got this and it feels quality you know you get those pens that feel quality in your hands you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna move that and i'm gonna put that there because the focus is annoying uh, and then I can write with stuff can't I um, so yeah just um, the weight and balance in my hand even the size like a nice chunky section there look flare out not massively unlike something like a Mont Blanc uh, section it's not exclusive to them but just saying um, with a little flare out there and it just sits in my hand very nicely you got this feels quality it feels solid there's a bit of weight in there um got a nice chunky section which i do like um so yeah you got like sterling silver um, as you can see on this so you got dv mid-size so delta V is a mid-size original so this is the reincarnated delta and this is 207 so obviously you can see the difference there in the numbering versus 34,000. i don't know what's going on but you know you know what I'm saying. Um, I'm not a massive architect person. Um, it is a Yovo. Uh, so I have like put, popped a um, nice medium Yovo in there from time to time. So I'm not sure whether that one's sticking around permanently. But this one is because I've had that nib now beautifully tuned. Um, and same thing. It's... Uh, you can feel the quality, you can feel the balance. So I was encouraged to explore a bit more Delta. Uh, so this may not be the last. I do prefer marginally um, the black cap color scheme, the kind of original. Having said that, this is nice too. Next, we have Leonardo Memento Zero Grande in the Galleria finish with ruthenium trim. I'm a sucker for ruthenium trim, obviously depending on the pen finish, but I really, really do like it. It's that um, kind of gunmetal-esque dark chrome uh, colour. Leonardo Italy there. Um, very nice material on this. I was very drawn by this. Um, uh, got this last year. I think I got this with a bonus from work. Decided to treat myself. And I was a bit disappointed because the nib was a bit iffy at the time. It was a bit skippy, a bit baby's bottom maybe, a bit um, skippy hard starty. Uh, when it wrote, it's lovely. The feedback on it. So it's the titanium number eight nib. Um, I really love like this, this nice soft feedback, pencil esque, uh, and this has been retuned by Thomas Ang. 
a couple of London pen shows ago. If I say I've got it tuned right, it's going to have been at a London pen show probably. Uh, Ebonite feed, so now works lovely, doesn't skip hard start. Um, and yeah, I, I, I really love this nib now, and it's a nice size. I do like the bigger pen. Uh, you've got the newer section, not like the old kind of, um, uh, I heard it referred to as a milk bottle section of Leonardo. Uh, this has got the new one, which is a bit more, again, like that little flare out, a bit more Mont Blanc-esque. Not saying it's based on a Mont Blanc, but you know what I mean. It's a familiar terminology. Um, piston filler. So yeah, uh, this is increasingly looking more and more like a keeper. I must admit though, I mean, this is a broad um, and it's lovely. It is lovely. Uh, and I love that feedback of that titanium nib. I have, it has crossed my mind from time to time, just as my tastes change a little bit, um, to perhaps get this retuned uh, or reground rather um, into something a little bit finer. I seem to be, certainly for my everyday writing, journaling, etc., even letter writing, I do seem to be gravitating a little bit finer. So whether that's a medium, whether it's in some cases a fine, because obviously grades aren't universal, um, or even somewhere in between. But I'm on the fence there. I don't know, because at the same time, I still like a nice juicy broad. Wah hey. And you've got a bit of bounce in here as well, and I just think that that might be nice if it was a little bit finer. Um, just give the line variation if I wanted it from a fine to something a bit less fine with the bounce rather than starting off at a broad. Don't know, I'm still on the fence there for that one too. But increasingly looking like a keeper. Um, very much enjoying this one at the moment. The so next, I have a Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. Now I'm going to warn you, I'm going to trap on for a bit here. Um, this is, this represents a bit of a personal journey in my pen collecting world. So if you're not interested in hearing that, you might want to sod off or um, skip ahead. Or this might even be the end of part one because I'm aware I'm running along. I don't know how long to make these things. Um, so yeah, uh, recently picked this up last week, uh, week before, whatever. This represents a bit of a personal journey. Not finish, but um, closure of a certain aspect of my uh, journey down the rabbit hole, I think. So when I got into the hobby, when I discovered the community, when I fell down the rabbit hole, um, one of the first grail pens um, that stuck out of me was this. Um, well, to be precise, it's actually this or the Dark Age, which obviously has the, the black trim rather than the um, rather than the bronze. Um, so made of lava right that's enough to get anyone's attention for a pen it's a pen made of lava well that's different um but yeah you know i was just like looking around websites and exploring and reading reviews and reading blogs um the fountain pen world um and this just sticks stuck out of me i was like wow that is a, a pen made from lava that's amazing anyway it became like a, a mini little obsession um and these retail you know anywhere from 700 up to 900 depending on where you get it a bit cheaper maybe but it's, it's a it's a big money pen or it's a big money pen for me um so at the time, the newbie to the fountain pen world, just discovering all these things that they even existed, um, 
and what they cost and how much money things went up to and wow is this worth it why is that so much you know what it's like maybe possibly could be talking bollocks but anyway um yeah it just became a i'm never going to own that but i'm going to lust after it you know what i mean anyway time goes on and i actually i saw a dark age uh come up for sale pre-owned it's actually from um, Anthony Newman, um, formerly UK Fountain Pens blog, which is still alive. Have a good read. Um, and at a reasonable price for one of these. You know. um, and it was a big, still a big leap back for me in the day. I was not far into my journey at all. I'm talking a few months probably. Um, and I bought it and I was chuffed and you know how it is. You got the, um, new pen day feeling, the new grail pen day feeling. Um, and yeah. And then there's a bit of a come down off of that because the nib just didn't really suit me. It was a fine, but it was, I don't know. Not as nice as this one anyway. Or maybe back then, to be fair, I wasn't, I didn't have my style down or I wasn't using it right or I didn't have my grip down right or whatever it might have been. Whatever it was, I didn't gel with the nib. I did not really enjoy writing with it. And that is the point. If I don't enjoy writing with a pen, it's generally not going to stick around. Um, even back then, even when I've spent a load of money, even when it's a lusted after grail, you know, um, so long story short, I ended up selling that. And then since, since that happened, it's always been in the back of my mind. Like, do, do I want another one? Do I want to search one out? Do I want to look at one at a pen show? Do I, do I need to try it out? Make sure that the nib suits me. Do I buy another one blind on the internet if I see a good price? All of these questions. Um, and I don't know, I think very recently I'd almost kind of closed the book on it a little bit or at least shut off a little bit of my brain that was speculating loads on it. Then what happened uh, was I was messaged by... Uh, John Rabbit, who runs PenSharing.com, and he said, look, there's some of these online at a really good price. Unfortunately, it was just after uh, the most recent London Pen Show, and I'd done my pen budget, you know. Um, I'm lucky enough to be able to go a little bit at a price point from time to time, but uh, usually I will try and save for a pen show just in case there's stuff, and there's always stuff. So anyway, I blame my budget. So I said to him, well, that is a damn good price. Um, you're talking kind of under half of retail, really. Um, but I can't afford it. So I'll have to wait and see if there's any left by the end of the month. And guess what? There wasn't. However, there was a twist in the tail. And long story short-ish, it turned out that there was one left. Um... So by that point, I was able to message the seller and say, look, I was still like a week short of payday. Um, I said, look, I'd love your last one. Any chance, any chance at all that you can hold it a week for me? And he's a very nice man. And he said, yes. And here it is. And there's still that thing in the back of my head at this point. It's like, OK, it's a good deal. And look, the, the, the benefits of that is if I had of not liked it or for whatever reason hadn't got on with it again, I could have resold it and not lost any money. But it's glorious. Um, so this has a fine nib, 18 carat. Is it 18 carat? Yes. Um, fine. But it's a lovely fine. It is smooth. It is 
it's not gusher, but it is de very decently wet. Um, not sure I could choo or choose a better tuning for that myself. Um, it's lovely. It's got just a tiny bit of bounce in it. It's not flex, but just a bit. It's a little tiny bit soft, but nice and firm for everyday right. Basically, perfectly tuned to my taste. It's absolutely fantastic. But that's out of the box, um, and I know I've you know I've heard about, a lot of people had bad experiences, and they kind of can name Visconti from time to time um, for nib QC issues. Uh, this particular one which was new in box, very, very nice. Um, so i kind of gone full circle on it now, and let me tell you something. This one is going nowhere. This is going to be with me on the permanent. Yeah, it's a keeper, it's a stayer, it's a banker. Banker, yeah. Um, absolutely love it. So that's a nice little kind of round trip personal journey on a Visconti Homo sapiens with me. If anyone was still watching at the start of this pen, they've probably buggered off now. But uh, I'm going to keep talking regardless. So yeah, you've got the Visconti V there. It's not quite lined up with that clip looking at it. Don't care. Um, I know these are magnetic, so potentially that could be moved. Not bothered. Not bothered. Um, it's obviously a vac filler or the power vac as i believe they call it you've got that uh clip which is spring loaded um yeah it's just lovely it's a really good balance for me you've got that hook safe um bayonet cap fitting so really quick release um sits beautifully in my hand the nib's lovely this one's staying with me so that's it's it's a nice i'm sorry to avoid tears but you know you can always switch off um it's a good round journey for me uh, in that that personal little grail from something I thought I'd never own to actually buying one, to being disappointed, to selling it, to coming close to reacquiring another one from time to time, to actually getting one at a really, 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 really good price that is phenomenally tuned to my tastes. It's a nice little personal journey. Um I may make this part one of this video because I'm aware I've trapped on for quite a time. So I've got four pens into my top tray. Um, so I'll carry on recording, but I'm going to split these up, I think, because I don't know how much people want to listen to me trap on. So if you vaguely enjoyed this, please comment down below and let me know what you've enjoyed. If you haven't, then let me know what you haven't enjoyed. Maybe I'll try and refine. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just carry on as normal. So, that's part one. Come back for part two. See you soon. Bye-bye.